Here's another skill that is very important to be able to, to do whenever you finish Chapter 3 in Calculus, and that's to interpret graphs of derivatives. So you kind of go both directions in Calculus. You have the problems where you get the original function, you do everything with finding the derivative and then graph the original function, and then you work in reverse, where you're given the derivative and you're asked questions about the original function st strictly from the derivative and not from any original equation. So what you're seeing up here are two pictures. Both of the pictures represent the first derivative graph, and then you're given a list of questions, a list of characteristics that you're trying to find out about the original function just from looking at what the derivative looks like. So we're going to go through each one of these and talk about what are you looking for to answer the question. So we're going to start with the very beginning thing here, which is increasing. So when you're looking at your derivative graph, you want to think of as everything above the axis as being a positive slope or an increasing region, and everything below the axis as being a negative slope or a decreasing region. So I'm going to kind of put my pluses and minuses up here. Above the x-axis, again, positive slope, increasing original function. Below, negative slope, decreasing original function. Your inner answers for all of these are always going to be x-answers. They're either going to be x-intervals or x-values if you're finding the extrema and the points of inter inflection. So for increasing, if I look at this first picture, it's above the graph from negative 3 to 0. So the way I'm going to write that is negative 3 comma 0. Again, setting up open intervals. And then it doesn't come above the x-axis again until we get to 4, and then it stays above the x-axis. So we have two increasing intervals, two places where the graph is above the x-axis. For decreasing, decreasing means that graph of the derivative is going to be below the x-axis, meaning a negative number. And that's going to happen in the beginning from negative infinity until we get to negative 3. That's the place where it crosses over to above. And then it's going to happen again from 0 until we get to 4. Now, when you finish with increasing and decreasing, your entire number line should be covered. Everything has to be either an increasing or a decreasing interval. So it's a good thing to check. When it comes to extrema, your extrema are going to be where it switches. Now, visually, it's going to be the places where you have these x-intercepts, the places where it crosses the x-axis. It is important which way it crosses, from above to below or below to above. That will tell you the type of extrema. So at negative 3, it goes from below to above. So that means it goes from decreasing to increasing, which means that you'll have a minimum at negative 3. At 0, it says the opposite. It goes from above to below. So a positive to a negative slope means it has a maximum at 0. And then finally, at 4, it does the same as it did back at negative 3. It goes from a below to above, so another decreasing, increasing. So we have another minimum at 4. One thing to keep in mind, your directions when you take a test or a quiz will always say be specific. Be specific means is it a minimum or a maximum. It does not mean what's the y value. There is no way to know the y value because we only figure those out by plugging things into the original function, which we don't have. So please don't tell me that there's a minimum at negative 3, 0. You have no idea where the y value is. You only know that a minimum is at an x equals negative 3. Now for the concavity, and this is more what you did recently. When you're looking for concavity of an original function, you're looking at the slope of the derivative. You want to know if the derivative is increasing, that means it's a concave up portion of the original, or decreasing concave down. So if you look at the original function, it starts off increasing. It starts off with a positive slope. It doesn't switch until it gets to this extrema right here at negative 2. So that means my original graph has to be concave up from negative infinity to negative 2. At that point, then, you're on the downward slide. You're thinking, again, almost like a roller coaster. So it switches to a concave down portion from negative 2 until it gets to this extrema as well, this minimum, which is at 1. That would be a concave down portion of the original graph. And then it starts to increase again for the rest of the graph. And that puts the 1 to infinity up in the concave up region. When you're trying to find points of inflection, they're really easy to see on a first derivative graph. Points of inflection will be the extrema, the minimums or the maximums, of your derivative graph. So we have two here. We have an extrema at negative 2, and we have an extrema at 1. And again, I have no idea what the y values are, and I don't even have different types of points of inflection. I'm just going to list the two of them. And you can see from what you wrote up above that it's where your concavity had switched. We're going to do the exact same thing for the next one. There is one slight difference that I want to point out as we go through it, but the same questioning. 
So first thing I'm looking for is when does it increase? So the original will increase when the derivative graph is above the x-axis. That actually happens from the beginning, negative infinity, all the way until you get to 1. Now you might be looking right here at this point negative 2. It doesn't cross over. It stays above the x-axis. So you can either say from negative infinity to negative 2 and then continue going negative 2 to 1, or you can go all the way through from negative infinity to 1. Both would be acceptable, realizing it didn't cross over. Decreasing then the rest of the time. It finally crosses over to the lower half of the graph at 1 and stays below the x-axis. So we only have two intervals here which means I only have one extrema. The extrema is where I drew the arrow here. It's that place at x equals 1 where it crosses. It's crossing from above to below, which means it's going from increasing to decreasing. So that means that I have a maximum at x equals 1. The biggest thing that I want you to take away from this graph that's slightly different from the last one is we actually have two critical values. Negative 2 is a critical value. It is a place where the derivative is 0. But it didn't end up being an extrema because it didn't cross over. It didn't switch from increasing to decreasing. It was increasing, and then it kept on increasing. So you could have a question that asks critical values and then turn around and ask, OK, well, which ones are extrema? And in this case, the two critical values, only one of them results as an extrema compared to the last graph where you had three critical values and every single one of them turned out to be an extrema. Now you're looking at your concavity. And again, you're looking for the increasing and decreasing intervals of the derivative. This graph starts off decreasing. So it actually starts off concave down. So if you want, you can write that. Here, it starts off decreasing until it gets to the minimum, which is what I've circled, at negative 2. Then it increases for a very short time. It only increases between negative 2 and 0. So that's a concave up interval. And then from 0 on to the rest of the graph, it is continuing to decrease. So that means the original graph is concave down. We again have two points of inflection because we had two extrema on my derivative graph. We had two places where it switched concavity. Those two places are x equals negative 2 and x equals 0. And what you'll notice about the negative 2, the one that I said was a critical value but didn't end up being an extrema, when that happens, it will always end up being a point of inflection because it is a place that ends up being a minimum or more maximum right where it touches that axis. So this gives you two examples side by side. This is exactly what you're going to be asked to do. Sometimes you'll have just single questions. I can give you a picture as a multiple choice and just say, when's the derivative increasing? Or where's the points of inflection on the original? And then you'll also have the questions that ask you to do the full process, which is what we had to do here.